are there. You don't need to look at the screen. The microphone's <laughs> there. Grant's there. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you all for, for being here. This is exciting. So I'm, I'm Dave Bell. I'm a researcher for the U.S. Forest Service, one of the co-PIs at the, the Andrews uh, in Western Oregon, uh, one of the forested sites. Um, for site news, Pam Sullivan just recently joined our executive committee as a rotator for two years. So it's exciting to have, have her coming in there. Also, we're up for our midterm review here in two weeks. So it's uh, a little bit crazy. And, and Matt sends his regards. He's was supposed to be having shoulder surgery today, though that I think got canceled at the last minute, but he regrets not being here. So I, I think like a lot of us, you know, why do we care about scaling? You know, we've talked about this a lot today, exploring drivers and processes at multiple scales, expanding our inference, having policy impacts. All of these are important. And, and at the Andrews, at least in recent years, we've been doing a lot, um, trying to link our long-term studies, experiments, models with remote sensing as a way to, to scale up. And so here, this is an example from a, a recent paper by Brooke Penaluna, um, taking models of trout presence and absence and stream based on a bunch of geomorphic variables and topographic variables, using LIDAR to then map out well, where are the trout bearing streams for coastal cutthroat trout, and then saying, okay, well, what ownerships and thus what land use is impacting uh, the species distribution across the landscape? And so, uh, you know, these sort of examples, they are opened up, like it was just mentioned by all this new data, but it's also the challenge, right? How do you manage all that data and find it available? How do you bring together collaborators with different experiences and expertise to actually make effective use of all of that? And so the example I wanna talk through is, one way we're starting to think about this is it's not just one of these studies in isolation, but it ends up being the results of one study get pulled into the next. And so here's a example of a series of studies First, back in 2016, mapping above ground life carbon at the Andrews based on LIDAR and tree observations. That then got fed into understanding and mapping microclimate. Uh, so, so temperature at one meter under these canopies, which in some cases can be 80 meters tall. And then that gets pulled into species distribution modeling to try to understand how things like topography and vegetation impact and climate under the canopy impact biodiversity. And so even though each of these individual studies has its own set of focuses and inferences they wanna make, we're pulling it together and uh, through this series of, of projects and gain a, a really refined understanding of the spatial patterns and spatial processes in our landscape uh, as a first step trying to get further beyond. And I wanna say, you know, one of the challenges we're sort of recognizing, I think we've mentioned here today, you know, what are the limits, limits of this type of inference? Whether you're using models, um, process models, mapping, you know, what can you say and what can't you say with that information? But I think also what's been mentioned a few times is especially with these things like LIDAR, how we, the, the, the developing the workflows to process it. We have five or six different LIDAR acquisitions as you see in the upper right over the Andrews and they all have different specifications. Sometimes they're different projections, sometimes different point densities. So how you pull all that together to make a consistent long-term data set out of this actually becomes a, a challenge that we're trying to work through. Um, leveraging lots of support from different places. Also the fact that Western Oregon has some of the most LIDAR in the country. Um, you know, the fact that we have five or six acquisitions is pretty amazing uh, and lots of expertise. The factors for making successful, you know, we've, we've prioritized LIDAR data for a while. Um, luckily places like LTER is a great place for collaboration across disciplines. And so that's, I think an advantage and a strength uh, in our case, we have a lot of land managers, especially on public lands, who are really interested in our science and our mapping um, as something they can feed into how they, they look at their landscapes. And then finally, you know, students and postdocs, you know, with any new technology, those folks push a lot of this, these projects, I think, and have the energy to really drive on it. So I think they're super important. So what are the impacts? You know, I like this example here of an impact where we have we take our science, we want to make regional assessments, and then hopefully it feeds back in to our science locally again. And this is an example, Sarah Fry's dissertation work, looking at occupancy, uh, seasonal occupancy of birds across our landscape as a function of, of climate and, and structure of forests. That fed into a regional assessment that Matt Betts and, and uh, Fallon et al. looked at across what we call the Northwest Forest Plant Area, basically the, the range of the Northern Spotted Owl in the United States with breeding bird data and found like, well, yeah, climate, there's, 
this negative relationship between species um, effects or the effects of spring warming versus old growth structure. So the species that are negatively impacted by warming in terms of their trends seem to also really prefer those old growth habitats. And then that fed into, again, looking back at our trend information in birds locally and trying to tease apart the microclimate and the old growth structure components in, ter in terms of how some of these species are responding over eight or 10 years. Um, and so I, I think that type of reciprocal sort of learning uh, is a real advantage where LTER potentially can gain a, quite a lot from these types of scaling ideas that we, like so folks have said, we bring back those hypotheses from the broader scales and say, well, how do we test that here? So thank you. Thank you.